Fellow citizens, on the eve of the 68th anniversary of our independence, I extend warm greetings to you and to all Indians around the world. I convey my special greetings to members of our armed forces, paramilitary forces, and internal security forces. I also congratulate all our sports persons who have participated and won laurels in various tournaments in India and abroad. My congratulations to Sri Kaila Shattarthi, Nobel Peace Prize winner for 2014, who has done the country proud. Friends, on 15th August, 1947, we won political freedom. The birth of modern India was a moment of historic exhilaration, but it was also tinged with the blood of unimaginable suffering along the length and breadth of our country. The ideals and convictions that had held through the travels of an epic struggle against British rule were under strain. A great generation of supreme heroes faced this formidable challenge. The sagacity and maturity of that generation saved our ideals from deviation or degeneration under the pressure of emotion, including rage. India's pride self-esteem and self-respect born from a civilizational wisdom which inspired the renaissance that won us freedom was distilled into the principles of our constitution by these extraordinary men and women. We have been blessed by a constitution that launched India's march towards greatness. The most precious gift of this document was democracy, which reshaped our ancient values into a modern context and institutionalized multiple freedoms. It turned liberty into a living opportunity for the oppressed and impoverished, offered equality and positive discrimination to the many millions who had suffered social injustice and instituted a gender revolution that has made our country an example of progress. We abolished archaic customs and laws and ensured change for women through education and jobs. Our institutions are the infrastructure of this idealism. Fellow citizens, the finest inheritance needs constant care for preservation. Our institutions of democracy are under stress. The parliament has been converted into an arena of combat rather than debate. It is time to recall what Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, chairman of the drafting committee of the constitution said while making his closing speech in the Constituent Assembly in November 1949, and I quote, the working of constitution does not depend wholly upon the nature of the constitution. The constitution can provide only the organ of state such as the legislature, the executive, the judiciary. The factors on which working of these organs of the state depends on the people and the political parties they will set up as their instruments to carry out their wishes and their politics. Who can say how the people of India and their parties will behave?" Unquote. If the institutions of democracy are under pressure, it is time for serious thinking by the people and their parties. 
the correctives must come from within. Fellow citizens, our country's rise will be measured by the strength of our values, but it will equally be determined by economic growth and equitable distribution of the nation's resources. Our economy promises much hope for the future. The new chapters of the India story are waiting to be written. Economic reforms is a work in progress. Our performance over the last decade has been commendable, and it is most heartening that after a deep, we have recovered to 7.3% growth in 2014-15. But the benefits of growth must reach the poorest of the poor much before they land in the bank accounts of the richest of the rich. We are an inclusive democracy, an inclusive economy. There is place for everyone in the hierarchy of wealth. But the first call goes to those who suffer on the brink of deprivation. Our policies must be geared to meet the zero hunger challenge in a foreseeable future. Fellow citizens, the symbiotic relationship between man and nature has to be preserved. A generous nature, when violated, can turn into a destructive force leading to calamities resulting in huge loss of life and property. Even as I speak, large parts of the nation are barely recovering from floods. We need immediate relief for the afflicted as well as long-term solutions for the management of both water deficiency and excess. Fellow citizens, a nation which forgets the idealism of its past loses something vital from its future. Our educational institutions multiply as the aspirations of generations continue to exceed supply. But what has happened to quality from base to apex? We recall the Guru Shishya Parampara with a legitimate pride. Why then have we abandoned the care, devotion, and commitment that is at the heart of this relationship? A Guru, much like the soft and skillful hands of a potter, molds the destiny of Shishya. The student with devotion and humility acknowledges the date of the teacher. Society respects and recognizes the merit and scholarship of the teacher. Is that happening in our education system today? Students, teachers, and authorities must pause and introspect. Fellow citizens, our democracy is creative because it is plural, but diversity must be nourished with tolerance and patience. Vested interests chip away at social harmony in an attempt to erode many centuries of secularism. In an age of instant communication, through ever-improving technology, we must remain vigilant to ensure that the devious designs of a few never overcome the essential oneness of our people for both government and people, the rule of law is sacrosanct. But society is also protected by something greater than law, humanity. Mahatma Gandhi said, and I quote, you must not lose faith in humanity. Humanity is an ocean. If a few drops of the ocean are dirty, the ocean does not become dirty." Unquote. Friends, peace, friendship, Araway to Midawaswatan Tradinotsuani Purskrinchkuni Jati Nudesinchi, Rastpati Pranam Mukherji Prasanginchar.